what can you tell us about uh, Modern Warfare 3? Okay. Well, first of all, Jeff, Modern Warfare 3 this year is the complete package. Liar! Uh, I don't uh, buy it! Uh, Talk all you want, but you better convince yourself of it first. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is an abomination. Playtime is over when Nikki drops in. Oh god, it's terrible! It isn't right! Make it go away! It's a Frankenstein monster stitched together from bits and pieces of previous games, repackaged and sold to us at full price. You're a demon spawn now. You're an abomination. MW3 has the least new out of any game in the franchise, which is exactly how I felt when the original came out in 2011. This is a world where nothing is solved. And someone once told me time is a flat circle. This time it's much worse. All the content at launch was recycled. Well, except for the cutthroat mode. This is compromised, it's a draw. <laughs> Oh, it's a draw? Okay, no. great. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? You guys lost zero, two, and three. <laughs> it's a draw. a draw. Mission command is coping, dude. <laughs> Articles and internal leaks have revealed what we can see with our own eyes. This was clearly planned to be an expansion to MW2. While late in development, Activision forced Sledgehammer deeper into the mines to turn it into a sequel. Hey, remember when Activision confirmed they would stop releasing COD annually? That's what made you, you did! I lied. <laughs> Old habits die hard. Apparently Bobby Shitdick just couldn't help himself and he needed to spread his cheeks and dump ass on the Call of Duty brand one last time before they merge with Microsoft. I really shouldn't have to keep saying this. You can enjoy this game. Hell, I enjoy it at times, but please don't defend it because you deserve better. But am I just being hyperbolic? Is Modern Warfare 3 really so bad? Or is there some nugget of greatness hiding beneath the shit? Well, let's release a $70 expansion, hunt down Makarov, and slide cancel our way straight into this. But before we start our search for more missiles, we need to find a rocket. No, not that one. This one, Rocket Money, the sponsor of today's video. You know what's annoying? Keeping track of all your expenses, subscriptions, and monthly spending. As an all-in-one finance app, Rocket Money helps you save more and spend less. It lets you set up custom budgets, manage all your subscriptions, and lower your monthly bills. You can easily keep track of your credit score too. Some businesses don't want you to cancel your subscription, so they make it tedious and confusing to do so. Rocket Money makes it easy. My ADHD riddle brain often forgets about things I sign up for and I end up paying for stuff I don't use. So for someone like me, having an app that keeps track of it for me is amazing. It's time for you too to spend less and save more. Download Rocket Money today. Try it for free using the link in the description. That's rocketmoney.com slash actman. Thank you Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. And now for something completely different. How about we start off with the worst part of MW3? Tell us a bit about what is the, the storyline? What can we expect from the campaign? Yeah, so for the first time for Call of Duty this year, we're doing a direct sequel. <laughs> Attention, we are now at DEFCON 1. Some of you might not understand why this is a major red flag, so let me explain. There's a good reason Call of Duty shifted away from direct sequels starting in 2007. Because the creators realized that releasing a World War II game every year was getting old. It's why Infinite Warfare got so much shit when it was revealed, because it was the third futuristic COD game in a row, and why fans initially praised COD World War II for going back to a boots on the ground setting. I've always felt this series was at its most creative during the Black Ops Modern Warfare sagas, because every year we alternated between two timelines. We would go from World War II to modern day, the Vietnam and Cold War, before jumping into the future. Changing the setting always ensured that despite releasing annually, the next COD would feel fresh. We'd explore different parts of the world at different points in time with new factions, characters, and we'd shoot people with new guns and gadgets. It was a brilliant strategy to combat franchise fatigue and it worked for a very long time. When it comes to Modern Warfare 3, however, I'm fucking exhausted. Having the same setting two games in a row does nothing but make the campaign and multiplayer feel more rehashed than it should. The biggest complaint I have is the campaign. It's the worst in the franchise. How on earth could this be worse than Ghost? New dog model is Black Ops 3. Train go boom. And Vanguard. I shoot Nazis. 
may die. Well, remember when Master Chief took off his helmet in the first episode of the Halo TV show? I never thought I'd have to suffer more than I did that day. The game opens with some military guys approaching what looks like the Gulag from MW2. Apparently, we're here to rescue Prisoner 627. And for a moment, things are looking all right. It feels like a regular mission, and you don't yet realize your plan is the bad guys. Hmm, who? Who is it? Oh, it's just some guy. What? 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 That's Makarov? <laughs> I thought it was just some random guy. He doesn't look like Makarov at all. Russian Ben Shapiro as Makarov. He does kind of look like him. It's a little weird. Let's say hypothetically that I just killed a man. Now, uh, I'm not saying I did, but if I did, I would have had to put a gun against his head and pull the trigger and now he'd be dead. Let's assume that life had just begun, but now everything has been thrown away. Makarov and his cronies mount their escape. They stop in an elevator where one of them suggests waiting until the guards are distracted. Makarov says, to delay adds risk, and then asks us, Who holds power in this gulag? The guards or the prisoners? Trick question. The electricians do. Get it? <laughs> this is the only time you get to choose dialogue, and it doesn't even matter what you pick. It changes nothing, and Makarov agrees with whatever you say. The prisoners. Yes, Andre. That's why the guards need guns. To shoot them. Had me thinking this might have branching paths like Cold War and Black Ops 2. <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> nice prank, Sledgehammer. So Makarov escapes. We cut the price and the rest of Task Force 141. Makarov is out. Say it, Colonel Laszlo. Makarov is out. He's on the move, John. This causes Price to panic, and he aborts the mission. Abort! Turn us around! Turn us around now! Wait, what mission? Uh, why are you guys here? Oh, I don't know. I just needed something cool to say. Okay, uh, here's a lesson in avoiding basic screenwriting fuck-ups. You need to let the audience know what's at stake if we're going to care. The purpose of this scene is to show Makarov as a man that scares Price. Whatever he's up to, stopping him is a top priority. But since we don't know what mission they're abandoning, we don't know what's at stake or what's being sacrificed. Maybe they're just canceling dinner reservations at the Cheesecake Factory. Makarov is out. He's on the move, John. Looks like dessert's gonna have to wait. And the scene fails to do the one thing it's meant to, create drama and fear around our antagonist. Anyways, we abruptly cut to Farah and Alex, who are on their own mission and... Wait. You! You're supposed to be dead! Am I not? Didn't you die in a fiery explosion that was manually detonated? What the fuck is happening? Oh, oh, Philip Graves is back too. <laughs> what? The, the bad guy of the last game is, he's just back? Wait, what? Get this. In a Warzone cutscene from season three of COD 2019, Alex is revealed to have survived. Alex, thought you were dead. Still standing. Somehow Palpatine returned. And in the season five cutscene of MW2, the same thing happens with Graves. Heard you died in a tank in South America. Well, I wasn't in that tank. Somehow Palpatine returned. What the fuck is this sloppy, shitty writing? How do you kill off two characters and then write them both back into the series in the exact same way? Hey, I thought you died. Nope. Well, I wasn't in that tank. Go fuck yourself. This trilogy has been grounding itself in realism, and now it's turned into a fucking sitcom where everything goes back to normal at the end, and death has no meaning. And I further decree that everything will be just like it was before all this happened, and no one will ever mention it again. But don't worry, folks. When Task Force 141 recovers all seven Dragon Balls, they can wish Captain Krillin back to this dimension. Also, this doesn't explain why Farah and Alex are working with Graves. He shows up and then Far and Alex are just like, oh, what's up, Graves? Want to work together? I don't know how you managed to walk past our security guards, but uh, please take a look at our highly confidential battle plans. And we can just forget about that time that you betrayed our friends, tried to kill them, and then you murdered 300 civilians. All is forgiven. I'm sure you just became a mass murderer for our sake. So at this point, the story is foobar, but maybe it might still be fun to play. <laughs> God, I'm so funny. The gulag at the start was made from the Verdansk prison, 
which was made from the original Gulag level in MW2. Arklov Military Base, the Stadium, Gora Dam. All these areas are blatantly recycled from Warzone. Oh, dude, this is a fucking part of the campaign right here. The, yeah, this is the fucking... Oh, yeah, that's the one where you're like where you're playing price and he's getting gassed. Even the worst Call of Duty campaigns always felt original, even if that originality was horrifying. He's messing with my mind. What about what's going on in that pinhead of yours? Like they used to make maps and copy areas from the campaign into multiplayer spec ops and zombies, not the other way around. So guess what happens? It's a domino effect. Now the campaign designers are fucked because they have to write a compelling story and try to create dynamic missions in areas that were designed for a battle royale, not single player. What's the result? We call them open combat missions. It's the biggest piece of dog shit. I'll admit, it's an idea that could have worked. COD rarely dabbles in non-linear levels, and when they do, it's usually the highlight of the campaign. But these are clearly a result of rush development. They're meant to pad out the runtime in a campaign that somehow manages to still be the shortest in franchise history. Six of the 14 missions are open combat. Even when 40% of the campaign is filler, they can barely make this crap more than four hours long. The objectives are always super exciting. Things like hack three cell phones, defuse three bombs, push three buttons, stick three fingers in your ass. And the storytelling in these missions is on par with Spec Ops. It's just people talking over a radio. Anyways, a friend of Farah is introduced and then... Oh! <laughs> oh shit! Uh-oh. I love you so much, Mom. I hope you never get shot. We're supposed to put GPS trackers on some missiles. So we do. And then we just let the terrorists take them. Have fun killing innocent civilians and blaming it on me. Why are we putting trackers on missiles instead of stopping the terrorists from taking them? Shouldn't there be a sequence where Alex and Farah are under heavy fire and they have to retreat so they settle for tracking the missiles instead of stopping the terrorists and our heroes barely escape with their lives? I suppose they could have shown Alex and Farah retreating in a cutscene, but we don't even get that. So our heroes end up looking like apathetic assholes that just give up. They don't even chase the trucks or leave the area because in the next scene they're mourning the death of that lady who had 30 seconds of screen time. Shouldn't this place be swarming with terrorists? Call of Duty has always told its stories through amazing set pieces, gameplay, and heavily scripted sequences. When you take that out of the equation, it completely falls apart. So Makarov assembles his team of cronies. I mean, conies. But back at the Gulag, poor Ivan suggested they wait in the elevator. How dare you take five seconds to consider whether it's a good idea to rush into open gunfire. Not on my watch. Well, who didn't see that coming? I think this scene is meant to be an allegory for the working conditions at Sledgehammer. Well, like, really? Really, dude? This is the best you can come up with to make Makarov look like a bad guy? It's the most cliche thing possible. The first time we see him in MW2, he shoots up a fucking airport. Talk about making an entrance. And since we know Modern Warfare 3 is recycling most of its ideas... Where do you think the plot is headed? The missiles. They're going for the missiles. <laughs> Classic. It's always about the missiles, man. Where the fucking missiles? I smell missiles. We're not recycling the plot from the last game, are we? No, no. It's not about finding the missiles again. I already did that. They wouldn't shut up about it. Where are the missiles? tony has got their own missiles. No missiles inside. Oh, those missiles. Two missiles. one missile gone. We're copying Iron Man, people. All right. Shepard is gonna be the one selling U.S. weapons under the table. Where were the missiles, Coco? Oh, she doesn't, she doesn't know where the missiles are. Oh, what do you get down? Where do you get down? The son of a missile are in Chicago. They're straight up copying the plot from last year. Shepard sends ballistic missiles to the Middle East. They get stolen. Bad guy puts the flag of another nation on the missiles to frame them. My missiles, my flags, my country. Same shit, different game. The more things change, the more they stay the same. In the third level, we need to destroy three helicopters. Then the Coney group releases deadly gas and, uh-oh, Price breathes it in? Cap! Stay with us, sir! Ah! Oh shit, now I'm kinda worried. 
I really hope nothing bad happens to- Yep, he's totally fine. Psych! This was another classic script writing fuck up. Chekhov's gun. If Price inhaling the gas doesn't change or add anything to the story, then why does he breathe it in? But normally after a scene like this, the perspective would change to another character and leave you wondering if Captain Price is gonna be okay. I remember this strategy working really well in Halo 2. It's such a lazy attempt at creating tension, but ironically, it does the opposite. The characters are acting like Makarov obtaining the sarin gas is a big deal. The fuck is in that gas? Remnants of Barkov's program, sarin. Highly concentrated, far more lethal. What are you talking about? You beat the gas, but you still need some time to recover. Price wakes up 10 seconds later and is immediately back on the field in perfect health. It's such a narratively confusing part. You know, in a story, if you want to do the, oh God, is this character going to die thing, you tend to stretch that out a little bit, you stretch the question. The way it's cut feels like there was supposed to be an entire mission between these two moments. He blacks out, you go do some other campaign mission somewhere else, and then he comes to the next cutscene because you have to stretch that emotional uncertainty, but he's just up immediately. Hey Makarov, you want real lethal gas? Go eat Taco Bell. You gotta love how these pre-mission briefings now look like everyone's chilling in a Discord call sending JPEGs to each other. Dude, if this was my Discord server, you guys would all be banned for spamming the same fucking image of Makarov a hundred times. Go join the Discord server, link in the description. They have used the same image of shirtless Makarov like 40 times. They keep using it every time he's mentioned in the briefings. It's like a running joke. I need to know how many times it's utilized. When Makarov. Makarov. This has got Makarov written all over it. Makarov, Makarov. Or someone. This is our shot of Makarov. Makarov. Is Makarov alive? Makarov. Price and Farah meet up to find those gosh darn missiles. But then the dumbest thing ever happens. Farah tells Price her missiles were stolen by Makarov and that those missiles were given to her by Shadow Company, who she's working with. Who sent you the missiles? Shadow Company. What? 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 Price is surprised by this, as am I, because apparently nobody told Farah what happened with Graves and Shepard? It didn't come up once in these Discord calls or during dinner at the Cheesecake Factory? Shadow Company don't have that kind of firepower. They're errand boys with tack vests. They're allies. They're allies. They're allies. What the fuck does that mean? Then although Price explicitly tells her that Graves, Shepard, and Shadow Company tried to murder him and his men, Far doesn't even tell Price that Graves is still alive. They carried out a hit on my men. Commander Graves did this. Yeah, well, he had his orders, yeah. From who? General Shepard. Did Shepard send you those missiles? My weapons are my business. What? 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 She doesn't give a shit. Friendship over. He's a very dangerous man, Farah. We are all dangerous, Captain. Shut up! <laughs> Shut up! Hey, can you stop talking like a Marvel character for two seconds and tell me if you're working with the people who tried to kill me? I never want to lie to you, but I can't tell you everything. What you call classified, I call secrets. Can you shut the fuck up? All right, here's the deal, Farah. You're dropping the shittiest one-liners and it's pissing me off. You say, Well, then let's help each other. Yet you refuse to answer my questions and share information that would help us both achieve our goals. I have every reason to believe you are now working with my would-be assassins and protecting them by not telling me. The writers probably didn't realize this would make you a villain in the story, but luckily for you, Farah, they made me, Captain Price, a fucking idiot. So I can't piece any of this together. Like always, I hope you trust me. Implicitly. Good. Yo, is this person fucking retarded? Yes. See you on the other side. Shoot then, Farah. Let's go get those missiles. Four missions in, and we have three deadly screenwriting sins. This time, idiot plot. 
Farah has no reason to withhold this information. She only does it because the writers didn't know how to force drama into this scene where there would otherwise be none. Maybe Farah could have led Price to Graves, who could then lead them to Shepard, a guy whose missiles keep coincidentally falling into the hands of terrorists. And although Price and Farah are supposed to be together in this mission, she disappears at the start. One thing you'll notice is that all the open world missions have you playing alone because the devs were unable to program friendly AI in these maps. Yeah, see, that was something I noticed. You're like there with three or four guys. It looks like you all airdrop down there and then it's just you. Feels kind of lame. As Laz well, we infiltrate a base to meet an informant. This level is just walking. It sucks. You don't want to keep you what? What? Oh, sprinting will attract unwanted attention. <laughs> what? Look at that guy. He's running. Out of my face. <laughs> they will shoot you for any reason in this. Oh my fucking god. This is so dumb. They, they look at me, they see I'm a woman, and they're like, gun her down. Oh, thank God. It's Yuri. Please save this campaign. Give us some info that makes the plot interesting. Uh, oh, a thumb drive. Well, okay. What's on it? Makarov's nudes? Did you get access to his OnlyFans? That's gross. So Laswell risked her life coming to this base to get intel. It must be pretty important. Except no, because we never find out what the intel is and it's never brought up again. So this entire level is filler. You could cut this out and it would change nothing. The only reason this level exists is to pointlessly shoehorn Yuri into the game in a desperate attempt at fan service. It ends up being a disgrace to the character. But if there's one level you can't screw up, it's no Russian. Uh, I hope I don't die tragically on this flight. So Makarov escaped from the gulag and he killed like 200 guards in the process. Coincidentally, there have been three terrorist attacks within 72 hours of his escape. And although logically this should make him the most wanted man on the planet with his face plastered everywhere, he's able to casually walk through airport security without any problems. He even manages to sneak in like six guns, body armor, and a, a bomb. You know, maybe if Task Force 141 would share that picture of Makarov they keep spamming in Discord, the Russian authorities would have caught him at the airport and ended this story as well as my suffering. Makarov is supposed to be a criminal mastermind who obsessively plans his attacks, accounting for every possible situation or complication. But this motherfucker didn't even wear a fake mustache. Basic logic is absent from every scene and it is driving me insane. Like this one, where Makarov and his men attempt to hijack the plane, but instead of a coordinated hijacking where everyone springs into action all at once, like that one time, this idiot sitting next to us puts a gun in our face, stands up, and then starts looking around for no reason. Kinda looks like me. What the fuck? <laughs> We're both cosplaying Bin Laden. Wait a minute, he does look like Mudahar. What the <laughs> fuck? Why yes, Mudahar, I would love to shoot Makarov's men. Thank you for allowing me to take your gun. At this point, we're playing as Samara, a former ULF freedom fighter. And because she's supposed to be vaguely Middle Eastern, the funniest thing ever happens. Are you a terrorist? No! You look like me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Ooh, oh, give the riders a raise. So the plane explodes and everyone dies. Farah and Alex go to the crash site to get footage to prove that Farah's group, the ULF, did not commit the attack. We need to find out what happened on that flight. Show the world it wasn't us. I won't have them call us terrorists. Not again. They look like me. So we hack three phones and destroy the evidence. Some people will believe the ULF was responsible. Thanks to you, no one can prove it. I mean, it's pretty obvious who did it, but... Glad I could help. 141 meets up with Laswell and they start going over footage from the airport. No one stopped him. Walk in the bloody park. Yes. Yes, I know, right? The plot makes no sense. Far and Alex, what'd they get? Not enough to prove anything. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What did you just say two minutes ago? Some people will believe the ULF was responsible. Thanks to you, no one can prove it. Far and Alex, what'd they get? Not enough to prove anything. Thanks to you, no one can prove it. Not enough to prove anything. No one can prove the ULF was responsible. You just said 
the evidence doesn't support that. Hmm, who else could have blown this plane up? Could it be the known terrorist that recently escaped from prison a few days ago? The same person who was captured on surveillance footage boarding the plane that later exploded? That's Makarov. Hmm? Could it have been that guy? They also have audio recordings from the cockpit and footage from the cabin, and yet nobody can use this evidence to show the world Makarov is behind this? Our heroes are all fucking idiots. Had him right in our fucking hands. I should have killed him on my other chance. You should kill me right now. Flashback to four years ago. Makarov has bombed the stadium because we needed to reuse another area from Warzone. Eventually we encounter an ambulance and there's a standoff. Turns out Makarov is inside. And while he could have seen the two guys with guns right in front of him and just reversed the way he came, Makarov recklessly decides to floor it, crashing the ambulance and getting his stupid ass captured. Why are you heading back into the stadium? You already blew it up, so why aren't you trying to escape? Our antagonist is a fucking idiot. And again, normally this is where Call of Duty would have some over-the-top, action-packed chase sequence that's so awesome, you remember it for another decade. But instead, we get something way more exciting. Fucking move. Oh my god. You ever have friends that you're hanging out with and he's like walking in front of you and then he just stops? Pushing simulator. Let's go. I don't believe in luck. I don't believe in luck. I believe in planning. You're right, Makarov. We only captured you because your plan to floor it was stupid. And because Soap and Price are fucking idiots too, they don't kill Makarov here and now because... We have him. He's in custody. He's not going anywhere. Amazing. You're all dumber than you look. That's what I'm saying. This is what I hate most about this story. Nobody is outsmarting or outplaying each other. One side of this conflict only gains the upper hand when the other side does something even stupider. We cut back to real time and Shepard calls Laswell via Discord. The writers treat this scene like it's the first time we've seen Graves since his supposed death. Wrong again, boys. Unfucking believable. I I know. The story sucks ass. The hero's surprise should mirror our own, but they already revealed Graves was alive in the most nonchalant way possible. Did somebody screw up and put this cutscene in the wrong place? Now, why is Shepard working with us to take down Makarov? I'm not going out like this. I want my name on a win. Well, it's a little late for that, dog. Did you forget when you ordered Graves to kill all those civilians? I guess the writers did. So we go to find Makarov's financier to give her an audit. This is your personal account, huh? Yes, Melina, it seems you owe some money in back taxes, and I thought we could go over your expenses for last year. Hey, remember when Price and Gaz took the gloves off to interrogate that fucking asshole and they almost shot his family in front of him? You want the gloves off? They're off. Now we get dirty, and the world stays clean. That's the mission. This is your personal account, huh? Soap says they're gonna take Makarov's money, and she's like, You're not very good at this. You're stealing from Makarov's future, not mine. Okay, well, I'm gonna steal all your money. Don't, don't you fucking villain. Fuck you. That account is my money. I fought for it. I earned it. I'm as good as dead without my money. I need my money. <laughs> Sounds like Activision. So anyways, Makarov is transporting something to a prison. Turns out it's Shepard? What? Huh? When did he get captured? How? Where was Graves? Do we ever find out? No! God damn it, hold on. Weren't you just submerged in freezing water? Why aren't you shivering? How come you show no signs of hypothermia throughout this entire mission? Well, Price, it's because... $70, please. One wrong move, and I'll put a hole through you. I remember how all this started because you didn't kill Makarov when you had the ch- Ah, oh, screw it. Why do we have to fight our way to an evac route? If we planned this out enough to where we knew exactly where they would be, why didn't the helicopters just pick us up right here? So then Sledgehammer throws in a random AC-130 mission for no reason. Whoa, okay, that, wow, you are not supposed to look up. Oh God, don't look up. That is, oof. That is rough. Why, they, why didn't they? Why didn't they finish the background? Can we not come up with new set pieces anymore? 
Are we so desperate for ideas we have to keep recycling this too? You could really tell they had to squirt this game out faster than my explosive diarrhea because I don't even think they had time to make a soundtrack. Anytime there's a moment where you might feel something, crickets. Yeah, you know, it's like, like, where's the music? You know, it, it, if it looks boring, I think it's just because there's, there's really nothing happening. Miller, pass the ox cord. Ooh, baby, trench gun. Still no music. Yeah, you're right. It's bizarrely quiet. Still no music. Yeah, the music guy's really, really fucking slacking. I've heard elevator music more intense than this soundtrack, dude. Oh my god, this is just... <sighs> December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. He was the best of us. The toughest. He'd have fought the world barehanded. What little music they bothered to compose is generic and forgettable. But if you listen carefully at the end of matches, you can hear the faintest whisper of the militia theme. Team Deathmatch. Take no prisoners, comrades. It's as if Activision is choking out the last breath of creativity and identity this series once had. Oh, you want good music? Oh, buy the Hans Zimmer pack for $15, cause that's now a paid feature, dickhead. So we shoot down Makarov's helicopter with a Predator missile and it crashes in a blaze of hellfire. The team goes to confirm the kill, but then Shepard says, We need to search the site for PID on Makarov. Your orders are to stand down. We got nothing but fire and brimstone out there and that's all the confirmation we need. You want to go out on a win, right? But you're telling me to not look around for his body. Our secondary antagonist is a fucking idiot. It's over, John. We nailed that bastard to hell and gone. Yeah, that's what we said about your little shadow grave, yeah? Yes! Yes, exactly! Makarov's gonna reappear and be like, no, I wasn't in that helicopter price. <laughs> but instead of doing the most common sense thing and taking 20 minutes to search the area, our heroes are content to wait for Makarov to show himself by committing another war crime. And you know what? This story makes me want to commit a few war crimes of my own. Now we're in a courtroom because the writers have to resolve conflict in the most boring settings possible. Despite having all the evidence that Makarov and not the ULF is behind these terrorist attacks, they needed Shepard alive so he could testify about it. This scene serves no purpose. Neither Graves or Shepard face any punishment from the law. They aren't even locked up in jail. Sometime later, Laswell gets word that, surprise, Makarov's alive and might be sniffing around London. Are you ready to see the best thing in this campaign? Oh, Riley, wow. A reference to COD ghosts. The best part of Modern Warfare 3's campaign is the new dog model. A fucking meme. That is a new, new dog, dog model right there. That's a fucking new, new dog, dog model, bro. If you thought the torture was over, though, Sledgehammer has one more card to play. The gang goes into an underground railroad because Makarov's gonna blow up a train or something. We fight our way to where the bomb is and secure the area. Price and soap work to defuse it. And then... Fuck you. 
This campaign fucking sucks. Why do you care so much, Act Man? Start talking about the multiplayer. Can't you see that matters more than some meaningless campaign? <laughs> meaningless, huh? What do you know of meaningless? <laughs> Guess you could say they really did so dirty in this one. But if you know you don't have time to write a proper send off for a fan favorite character, don't kill off the fan favorite character. Have this be a campaign where butt fuck happens. Nobody gets killed off and we can just sweep it under the rug. COD 2019 was a breath of fresh air, a worthy remake of COD 4 on a flashy new engine. It reintroduced classic characters, but remade them and the plot, so it felt like a fresh take. The MW2 remake may have had a weaker story, but it made up for that by emphasizing the characters, their development, relationships. It gave them depth. Modern Warfare 3 throws all of that in the garbage in a way that Ryan Johnson can only dream of. It makes you feel stupid for caring about any of this in the first place. The original MW3 has the most satisfying ending in the series. The remake has the exact opposite. This is cheap, shock value bullshit. Makarov literally comes out from behind a corner and shoots him, like it's straight out of a Monty Python sketch. <laughs> Inquisition. Then there's the choreography. So Soap and Price get shot. Then Makarov stands there and monologues about it for 10 seconds, allowing Soap time to get up and stab him. But there's like six guys with machine guns behind him? Why didn't they shoot Soap? And then Soap just stands there with one hand completely free and lets Makarov shoot him again. What the fuck were Gaz and Ghost doing off screen? Stroking each other's cocks? Ghost even knows Makarov is here. Christ, be advised, Makarov is in the channel. He's heading your way. The area is completely secured until Makarov shows up. So Gaz and Ghost just watch Soap die. I wouldn't want shitty friends like that at my funeral. And then Makarov gets away, again, not due to some clever plan, but because our heroes are worthless. Don't worry, folks. Once season three for Warzone comes out, they're gonna retcon this shitty ending. Soap's gonna reappear and be like, actually, my brain wasn't in my skull. He must have transferred his consciousness throughout his entire nervous system. He was the best of us. The toughest. He'd have fought the world barehanded. Don't be sad. This is just how it works out sometimes. And why is Price perfectly fine? Didn't you just get shot, you asshole? I think I've made my point, but let's compare this scene to the original. It's a very emotional sequence. Makarov lays a trap that catches Yuri and Soap by surprise. You and my friend, you never should have gone here. What are you talking about? Soap is the only one who heard Makarov refer to Yuri as my friend. Up until this point, the player doesn't know much about Yuri and assumes he's not that important. Then you have to escort Soap to safety in a sequence that, the longer it goes, the less chance he has of surviving. It feels like a real battlefield with tangible stakes. The main character's life hangs in the balance. When Soap finally is out of harm's way, our relief is short-lived. Come on, stay with me, son. But his last words ignite a mystery. This revelation changes everything in a twist similar to Bioshocks, where we learn the character we've been playing as isn't a mere bystander. He's been instrumental in all the events leading to this point. So trusted you. I thought I could too. So why in bloody hell does Makarov know you? Yuri's flashbacks tie all the loose plot threads together. Soap's death feels more important than us witnessing the destruction of the Eiffel Tower. It's symbolic and a fitting end to the protagonist of the trilogy because we as Price get to avenge his death before the game ends. There's so many things happening around and after Soap's death. What's happening here? Well, I'll tell you. Absolutely fucking nothing. You know what? Maybe Treyarch was onto something with Black Ops 4. Maybe they knew. It's better to make no campaign than to torture your fans with a shitty one. As a final kick in the balls, there's a mid credit scene where Price shows up inside Shepard's office. We don't even get to kill Shepard ourselves. No, I am not gonna beg for my life. Wouldn't do you any good. Am I supposed to feel something? Am I supposed to feel anything? But well, you know why this is worse than Vanguard? 
that game was goofy. Like they got red dot sights on a World War II game. It's a joke, but it's a joke we can all point and laugh at. It didn't matter if the characters sucked because they didn't have any emotional equity, history, or connection with this franchise or its fans. Modern Warfare 3, on the other hand, is meant to cap off the third remake of a beloved trilogy, but they fucked it up so bad, it's irredeemable. That's why this is the worst COD campaign. Modern Warfare 3's campaign utterly fails at everything it tries to do. Halo 5 was better than this. But let's clear our mind with a little zombies, right? We've run aground. God damn it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, oh my God, we got it. Wow, wow. There are those who said this day would never come. What the fuck is happening? What the, f what in fucks? What the fuck is? Oh my God, is it, what the fuck am I? Huh? Okay, all right, all right, that's cool. What the fuck was that? The the second something actually cool happens, it is just immediately cut short with fucking teleportation. I'll admit my takes on zombies over the years have been volcanic. And when it comes to war zone zombies, I... Well, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good this year. I think the phrase war zone zombies says it all. It sounds like a free Halloween event. And if it was just that, this wouldn't be half bad. But no, this is the new zombies mode. Part of that complete package. Modern Warfare 3 this year is the complete package. What the fuck is he happening? What the fuck? Where is he? He's just fucking like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> what the, what the fuck is this? <laughs> this is the zombies I remember. Yep, yep. <laughs> Just stay right there. <laughs> right there. Some fucking floating priest having a seizure in a wall. I am having so much fun. <laughs> wow. 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 Holy shit. They recycled the objectives and formula from DMZ and MW2. They copied the Urzikstan map from Warzone and then smushed it together with zombie types we saw in Vanguard, BO3, and Cold War. What the fuck? What is happening over here? Yo, look at, turn around. Is it not bugged out for you? There's like a whole last <laughs> fucking box here. <laughs> yes, what yes, it's bugged out. Your main goal is to complete arbitrary contracts and objectives for loot, to then leave the match and jump back into a new one. Not entirely sure where I'm supposed to have fun during this process. When you talk about our zombies, you're talking about really tense moments. So we want to maintain that. Now this is riveting gameplay. Now get this, in Warzone Zombies, one of the biggest innovations is that you play with three people instead of four. Also, random players now appear in your zombies lobby? <laughs> what? You want to explain yourself? And for the first time in history, the developers are gatekeeping the amount of fun you can have with a time limit. Oh shit, oh shit, we have a time limit. We have to, we, we have a limited amount oh, of time. Run, 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 go, 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 stim, 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 sprint, 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 now, now, run, run, fast, fast, fast. I'll, I'll finish time, remember. Only a certain amount of a lot of finish allowed. <laughs> the gameplay and objectives aren't the problem. It's pretty satisfying shooting zombies. The issue is at least one third of my time is spent running around doing nothing. Oh, the contract is bugged out and it's stuck in the table and I can't pick it up, nice. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, you like you just straight up can't pick it up. Guess we're not doing that one. No, this wasted, just, uh, our, this wasted our time. We can't have <laughs> as much fun now. We only have 32 minutes of fun left. Fuck, 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 fuck. Where do we go? Where do we go? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Run, run, run. Run, 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 run. Oh shit, we've got a lot of points. We're gonna go pack. But do remember, we only have 17 minutes of a lot of fun left, so we've got to be quick. I know, I know. Instead of rounds that get progressively more challenging, we have three tiers. The goal is to exfil with gear good enough to trivialize the tier one area of the map so you don't have to waste your time there and can have fun fighting zombies that actually pose a threat. Oh, an insta-kill. We can enjoy that for our last few minutes of fun. <laughs> it's the kills already on. All these zombies die in one hit. <laughs> Yeah. I thought exfilling in Cold War was cool because the strength of the zombies was based on the round, so it could get quite intense and you could exfil more or less whenever you wanted. But now you have to run back to the tier one area and then I like how it forces us, it forces us to come over here to leave and then it makes us wait. <laughs> we got to use up all of our allotted fun though. Okay, now we just sit here and we, uh, we tab out until the Xbox spawns. Yeah, our fun is at an end. It is.
I always thought Black Ops 1 set the gold standard for zombies content at launch, but these days they only launch zombies with one map, which means you get one chance to enjoy the mode. You either hate this map or you like it. If there was a round based map or mode to satisfy players like me, I might be singing a different Easter egg song. But has Warzone become so invasive and overbearing to this franchise that even zombies must yield to it? It can't just be its own thing anymore? Why is it so hard to go back to the formula everyone agrees is the best? I get why some folks are defending Warzone zombies. I do. Because we're coming off of Vanguard. These are dark times. And people are desperate for a W. No! You're just trying to confuse me! I won't listen to the ravings of a lunatic! Did anyone else notice that Vanguard and MW3 both had to copy their zombies maps from someone else's homework? But as one trained in the Force? You know that true coincidences are rare. Here's the thing, Zombies has always reused parts of the campaign and multiplayer in its map design, but it did so in such a subtle way that you really had to pay attention to notice. But even like going back as like early as like World of War, I mean, Nact was Airfield, all up there from the campaign. Verrupt was Asylum. Shinonuma was Knee Deep. They were just like multiplayer maps that were like converted. But the thing is, they did it so well and like so yeah. tastefully. And yeah, I didn't so, even like, know that. So like in a curated manner. Yeah, see, there you go. Did, did I mention there's also guys with guns on the map? What the fuck? Who the fuck's shooting me? What the fuck is that? Oh, there's guys here with guns? What the fuck? <laughs> what? Okay, all right. Not even zombies, just regular soldiers. They're using sentry turrets and counter UAVs? <laughs> they actually have a fucking counter UAV. <laughs> They're throwing grenades at me in a zombies mode. This is weird. Oh yeah, there's also fucking guys with guns in, in zombies. Oh, I cannot stand that, dude. Keep that shit as far away from zombies as possible. That should not ever be in zombies. Dude, I... What the fuck? To the hardcore zombies fans. I'm sorry. Some of you might pretend this is what you want. But deep down, I suspect you resent it as much as I do. And you understand that, like campaign, zombies is special and you can't just copy and paste it onto a fucking war zone map and call it a day you crave a handmade curated round based zombies mode same as me i was right i am the same as you some fans claim mw3 has the best multiplayer in years what do i think i think this should have been what it was intended to be an expansion to the game we already had. Modern Warfare 3 does little to innovate the formula beyond locking improved movement mechanics behind a $70 price tag. Much like how you had to buy Infinite Warfare to play the game you actually wanted, they tempt you with everything you've been asking for. But look, Actman, every classic Modern Warfare 2 map is here. That's your favorite Call of Duty, isn't it? Yeah. So this is a Modern Warfare 3 remake that doesn't remake any maps from Modern Warfare 3. Yes, and you don't see any issues with that. I can go fast now. If you were hoping to throw down on Dome, Mission, Arcaden, Resistance, Bootleg, Hard Hat, well, your expectations are too high. I will give Sledgehammer some props. These are very faithful remakes, right down to the nitty gritty details. The maps are and always have been amazing, with a couple exceptions. They even included derail so you can feel nostalgic when you vote to skip it. Movement is now the main appeal and core personality of this game. Fans have been asking for this and it does dramatically change how these classic maps are played. The movement opens up new paths of traversal, new flanking routes. Oh fuck. Climbing, mantling, and jumping are way faster and smoother than ever before. I enjoy the longer time to kill, as players have the tools and a much better chance to turn the tables in a firefight if someone gets the jump on them. All this movement tech creates new ways to outplay your opponent, and with solid gunplay, this should be Call of Duty at its best. Here's the problem. You can't throw the super fast movement onto the old level design and expect it to work as intended, unless your intention is to break the old level design. We saw this in Halo 5, they had to stretch out classic maps to accommodate sprint. And like with Vanguard, the hyper fast pace of the game removes a lot of tactical decisions you'd normally have to make, often turning matches into a chaotic clusterfuck. Areas that were once designed as crucial choke points, eh, you can just slide through them now without a care in the world. On maps like High Rise, it is cool to mantle over walls you couldn't before, but this breaks the carefully constructed lanes. MW3 is also incredibly sweaty. When I play with friends though, that's when I run into people who, you know, drop shot me when I'm not even playing. 
There's so many times though where an enemy and I sprint past each other. By the time we both realized we just saw an enemy, we're already 15 feet apart. Now there are some very important improvements to the game that I personally appreciate. Not every attachment reduces ADS time. Underbarrel grenade launchers and shotguns don't reduce it either. By some stroke of wizardry, noob tubes have been properly balanced for the first time ever. Also while editing this, I noticed that this guy fired a noob tube at me at almost the exact same time. And the fact that I can even see how close it was to killing me is actually pretty cool. They are fucking awesome. <laughs> And I think I'm the only person that uses them. Also, I'm a fucking god with frag grenades. Throwing grenades! One of the new snipers feels like an overpowered intervention. It is so satisfying. Or am I just high? Oh, look at that collateral! Apparently, Sledgehammer wanted to reintroduce the Pick 10 system, and you can see remnants of that with this new vest option. I think many of the perks and field upgrades are a bit too niche, but hey, man, I'll take changes to this. Class customization, pretty good. Unfortunately, this is like the sixth year in a row they've launched a new con with the same game modes. No, I don't want to play anything but hardpoint and domination. On a positive note, it looks like they're adding demolition back in for the first time since Black Ops 3. While the customization is nice, the progression licks Bigfoot balls. So instead of unlocking all the perks, equipment, attachments, and weapons by, you know, leveling up, nah, you've got to complete daily challenges. Oh, you mean this exact system that Halo Infinite has spent the last two years correcting because everyone hated it? Yes, I love having arbitrary challenges gatekeep my progression and dictate how I play video games. Hey, asshole teammates, come resupply from my fucking ammo box. I'm trying to unlock the Harriers. What fun fucked asshole thought this was a great idea for progression. So you want to get this fucking gear package? Do you want to stick a shock stick up your ass? You got to do daily challenges. You only do like three a day. They they literally designed it so you just fucking have to come back. Who walks behind progression? This is worse than fucking mobile games, dude. Make it make fucking sense. To me, the armory unlocks are just another example of Activision prioritizing player retention. Uh, act man, but this time you get a choice of what you unlocked. Yeah. You know what game did that better? Ghosts. If I ever compare a new Call of Duty to Ghosts and Ghosts comes out on top in some way, you know, you, you done, done fucked it up. up. In BO1 and Ghosts, you earn currency just by playing and could pick what you unlock. That's it. Don't make me do stupid fucking challenges, okay? Just let me play the game. You want to talk kill streaks? Those are pretty much all the same. There's like three new ones. Would have been a perfect time to bring back support streaks, but come on, this isn't a remake of MW3. Check out how cool this Juggernaut Recon streak is. It isn't cool at all. It just took away my weapons and gave me nothing. Now how about Ground War? Well, it's the exact same as last year. Although now there's a 50% chance the mode will run at 15 frames per second. Nice, I got the glitch. So what does the glitch do? Oh my God, what doesn't it do? <laughs> that's, that's what you want to hear. <laughs> oh, it lags to fucking shit. Oh my God, dude, it is like, it is, oh my God, it's so bad. Holy shit. The, the FPS is like 15 right now. It's like 15. Oh, nice. And it is stuttering more than a child with a speech impediment. But rejoice, COD World War II fans, for the war mode returns. Is it better than before? No! You'll love the return of the same restrictive kill barriers that funnel everyone down one of three incredibly short lanes with no room for ingenuity or creative traversal. No missiles for you today, lad. Oh, get fucked. Come on, I can't even... Oh my God. I have to come up this way. I can't, e I, I, you, I can't even flank them. The war mode only has one map. Yep, they copied the mode from COD World War II where you escort a tank. The objective is to stop a missile launch. Stop the missiles before you We're gonna stop the missiles. Okay, stopping the missiles. Fuck. 
and the map is made up of stolen assets from Condor Hideout, Crossfire, and Countdown. This is a COD 4 map? No, no. If they're reusing shit from COD 4 too, man, this is... It is? Oh my god! They don't have a single fucking idea! You're right! You're right, it is! They had to steal maps from 16 years ago to hit that deadline. This is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I Check had kind of like right a uh, a subconscious feeling that I had seen this before. And you're absolutely right. Dude, that is just, this is sad. You know, at least the war mode used to let you play out certain fantasies like Storm in the Beach on D-Day. All three launch maps were completely original, handmade. He even had an announcer that sounded like he gave a shit. Keep the enemy from building the bridge. The enemy is building a bridge. The, the bridge is being built. The bridge is half built. The enemy is building a bridge. Stop the enemy from building that bridge. They're building a bridge. Enemy soldiers are approaching. Lock the space down and eliminate the threats to protect our mission. Protect our anti-air weapons. Do not let them air drop armored vehicles. Wait a minute. This version is awful! Yeah, they ruined it! Oh my god, it's terrible! Although I was initially excited to hear factions would be returning, the announcers in the game are so lifeless and apathetic that I actually prefer the British guy from Vanguard. Team Deathmatch! Subdue all threats! Use all your senses! Sight, sound, touch, smell, and gun! Oh my god, that was... <laughs> I don't even know why factions are here when we still have the operator system and I can play his fucking Skeletor. Wait, wait, did you see? If you go to the operators and you go to Skeletor, it's Skeletor TM. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. literally Skeletor. <laughs> it's literally TM. Skeletor. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. Oh my god. god. That's amazing. Holy shit. If you god. click on it, you can play as Horde Skeletor TM. Or, or, just, or Disco Skeletor, just go TM. Skeletor TM. I gotta wrap this up. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is a testament to how low standards have gotten. Activision Blizzard continues their rampage of scummy business practices, attempting to pull a fast one on their dedicated fan base by branding this expansion as a brand new premium title. Given the rush development, the majority of content had to be stolen, copied, or recycled from other games. The series is creatively bankrupt, and this deserves to be the worst reviewed Call of Duty. The campaign is worse than bad. It's an insult. It not only destroys the characters we grew to love, but destroys any interest I had in where this new timeline was going. Zombies to me feels like a cheap attempt at attracting the Warzone audience to zombies, not through the strength of the zombies mode, but by making zombies more like Warzone. The multiplayer? Will likely be fun for a time and if any part of the game is gonna get love it's this and this game certainly feels like it was thrown together in 16 months and that is why call of duty modern warfare 3 is so bad thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and subscribe to the act man for more awesome content check the link in the description join my public discord server go follow me on twitter and instagram all right everyone that's all i got for today this is the act man signing out Peace.